Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Midwest Whitetail After Hours podcast presented to you by Hoyt. My name is Jason Science. I'll be your host tonight. Um, I've got some folks here uh, that want to share some uh, some of the recent uh, recent knowledge they've gained uh, out in the field. Um, let's uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, let's start with Adam and go right around the clock. That's all right. Hey, guys. My name is Adam. I'm, I think this is definitely the first time you guys have uh, probably met me. I know Gavin, we met. Caleb, I'm not sure if we met earlier this year. And Owen, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice um, to meet you. Going on, man. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm a first year member of the show. I represent the Great Plains show down here in Kansas and was lucky enough to fill my tag this week. Um, it's been a long season, but, but excited to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Man. Welcome. Excited to hear about it, man. Man, it's it's a long one. <laughs> and then we have the world famous Owen. <laughs> yeah. Who needs no introduction? Um, uh, along with Caleb and up in my top left hand corner, um my, my other Gavin. <laughs> Um, I've spent the last, uh, I feel like I've spent the last two weeks with Gavin. Um, not this Gavin, but, uh, but my Gavin, I guess I'll call him. We've been in the tree a lot together here the last uh, 10 days, so it's been a lot of fun. Um, speaking of that, I guess let's start off with Adam. Um, what, uh, what happened? <laughs> yeah, so uh, when it was yesterday morning, man, the last 24 hours felt really long. Um, but my my buddy Josh and I he's he's the other part uh in the show with us and we've been uh sitting together all year probably 35 sits and probably 15 of them have been after um this deer we call the big 10 and yesterday morning was the one morning that he he couldn't join me so I ended up self-filming I was in the tree by myself um but Josh ended up killing last week. He got a he got a good eight point. Um, I think Ben's putting that together for this week's show. Um, but anyways, this this ten point, he showed up last year, and I I think we put him at four and a half last year, but just a real framing deer, like super symmetrical, um, and had a decent pattern on him last year, and and then he just kind of disappeared, you know, going into the winter and summer. And he didn't show up again until like the very last of October. Um, he sh we got one trail camera picture of him in, a, in an area where like is in the middle of the property, you know, the middle of this timber. So I, I don't know how we never got a picture of him before. Um, but he started using, you know, using the property again whenever does started coming to heat and coming to check him out. But it was a it was definitely an interesting hunt for him because I call it inconsistently consistent and I'm I'm excited to hear Owen if you've ever had a deer do this. Um so I I would get a picture of him probably every four days. And on that on that day, I'd get a picture of him um between the north and the south, that distance was probably three quarters of a mile. And he'd make a whole loop around the property, whether it's daylight or evening. Um, and then I'd, I'd get a picture of him going to the neighbors. So I figured he lived on the neighbor. Um, so I ended up making friends with him this last week, just trying to figure out if he lives over there, if he's hunting him. And he, he owns like the whole two miles or has permission or whatever. And he ends up having pictures of him like two miles the opposite direction and then another mile south you know just making a huge loop like a total of a four mile radius consistently for the last two years you know during during this october november time period so i i mean i knew that i wasn't going to be able to sit there and pattern you know where he's living and where he's feeding and everything so I knew like the exact travel path that he was going to take eventually, you know, one of these days. And I just put in the time and decided to set this set that we hung for him specifically this year. Um, but anyways, I got into the tree last night or yesterday morning, about 45 minutes before dark. And I actually spooked out deer, blew out deer. Um, 
that were right there and they blew at me for like three or four minutes before I could get in the tree. Anyways, I get in the tree and then right as it's, you know, day breaking, I, I see a doe kind of moving around. So I was like, oh, might as well stand up for the camera over there. And I, don't, I couldn't really tell if the camera had much light on it. And then I all of a sudden hear grunting and he's like at 15 yards, just walking to the base of my tree and he, he gets right underneath me smells my ground center something jumps up jumps away you know rounds the brush gives me a 20 yard quarter and away shot and i was just zoomed in just a little bit too much because right whenever i was able to take the shot he was like a step out of the frame but anyways put a good shot on him he didn't go but 80 yards probably and by far my biggest gear to date i think i ended up scoring him myself today he scored 176 Nice. Wow. Congratulations. Thank right. you. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, it was uh it was exciting to get that, you know, that book to close because it was really the only mature deer on that whole piece that we've seen this year new was around from last year. Um so just just the odds of you know him coming to the base of my tree, you know, one morning that I was hunting there just worked out perfectly. Yeah, I don't think you're crazy on that movement pattern either, Adam. I've talked about that before, and I see that mainly in like broken woodlot country where you got a small woodlot and then, you know, another quarter miles, another woodlot, or, you know, maybe river, river bottom country, kind of same thing. Mm -hmm. It's like they're in that woodlot for a day or two, and they just keep making the circle. You see them every three or four days, and they're just making a big loop, and it sounds like something similar to what you were seeing. Yeah, it is a creek bottom. There's a creek that runs, you know, it it gets on the corner of the mile section, then crosses to another. It's basically all ag country. There are big ag fields, and obviously along the bottoms of the creeks, that there's there's some timber. But I was just surprised how much ground these deer are covering in between does, because I had a picture of them, you know, at 3.30, and then three quarters of a mile, I had a picture of them at 4.30, just cruising. So... Yeah. Yeah, those creek bottoms, I think, are notorious for that. Those are the ones you always hear about. You know, they're covering two, three, four miles a day. And, of course, they're they're tough to catch up to them in that scenario. I'm sure you've run into it. Whereas yeah. when you have a lot of does and a lot of cover in, you know, a central location, let's say. I mean, they don't have far to go, you know, to go to the next doe, which makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Relative. What's that geography What's that geography look like down there, Adam? Is that is there a lot of woods down there, or is it more open country? I'm just wondering. That's four miles. That's a good range. I mean, it's yeah. not a huge, huge range, but it's probably a good range for down there, not. I can pull it up if you if you guys want to look at it. Um, if not, then I don't have to. But it's not like a typical wide open Kansas country you'd imagine. It's only you know it's in the far southeast corner. So that's pretty good woods and everything. Yeah, I mean, you know, river bottoms, creek bottoms, there's good blocks of timber. Um, but, and there is some cattle around, but mainly just farming. Yeah, it seems like if you find timber in Kansas, you're in the, you're in the chips for a good one. <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're going to see. But I don't know if you, if y'all are interested to, to look at the map or not, I could share my screen. Sure. Got GPS coordinates. <laughs> oh, it, it disabled my uh yeah, maybe we, we shouldn't show the GPS coordinates. But I think you have it disabled. Can't give away the honey hole. Yeah. But anyways, uh what was interesting though, my neighbor, um where you know where he is is across two different roads. It's kind of at a caddy corner of the mile section and it's a crooked mile section so during the day you know we would compare pictures and he's crossing the road during the day i don't know if he's crossing you know under a bridge i i don't know of deer doing that but there is a bridge you know along that creek and and this year with it being so dry they're able to kind of walk it i don't know if he's actually crossing the middle of the road during the day or going under there Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely interesting to try and pattern this deer and learn this deer. 
there is so you're saying he was pretty uh pretty sporadic with his movement pretty tough to pin down yeah i mean he, that's why i said inconsistently consistent because it wouldn't be you know every day or even every couple of days but whenever he did show up i could kind of tell you exactly you know the trails he'd be on so that's why i just put all my chips on setting playing the wind and setting on that trail that that i knew if he was there he was going to walk in and and timed out right you know where i was sitting that time so i knew if he was going to be on the property where he would be but who knows if it would be if he was with a doe or you know if he found a doe on the far opposite side of that four mile radius who knows when i'd see him next right oh and what have you been up to besides uh nursing yourself back from being sick man that's it i've been circling the drain right after i killed that wide nine i got sick and i've been in rough shape since pretty bad but surprisingly it just won't go away i was just hanging on this chest cold and just you know can't breathe kind of stuff won't go away so who knows Hope going, I'm ready by gun. going around the way it sounds yeah, what about you kate go ahead no i was just gonna say yeah it's pretty brutal yeah caleb what have you been up to oh i've been busy um gosh last i talked to you guys i think i had a couple days before i went down to uh film with lee and um we encountered that hog junior buck one last time you know he came down the one trail that was of course the with the southwest wind that we had was the one thing that we had to give up in the day before none of these deer were using it so i thought it'd be bulletproof set and of course the first deer we see that morning he comes down this trail and uh couldn't get a shot through the brush and everything but he got our wind at probably about 25 yards probably five yards away from getting getting put in the freezer but uh went back blew had to blow of course 20 30 times just to make it even worse for me and um over the next ridge he went but it was funny you know adam brought up that his buck was on a four-day cycle well this deer is on a two-day cycle i'm on his southernmost uh, um range and he's been coming onto the farm and you know he might stay a day he might stay three days on the farm but whenever he leaves he does not come back for bare minimum two days more time than not two days um he's came back a couple times um after three days but it's it's almost comical at this point because i mean every time that we go in there hunting him the day after we encounter him it's almost like we're just wasting time in there um, because that's really just the one buck that um, we're hunting. But it's funny how those deer are. You know, I had summer pictures of this deer two miles to the north. And um, unfortunately, that property got sold to a different landowner. Um, but the last two years, that's where it is all summer. And then starting at September, he just comes in there checking things out. And I, I, I'm trying to think, what would you guys say is that time in October or maybe eight September when they start cruising that range, they walk that their entire range. Do you guys see that um, on your cameras very often where they just almost walk their entire uh, core area that they're going to run in the rut daylight um, for a day or two or no? I see them yeah. just pop on camera just randomly like you hadn't seen them all summer and all of a sudden, bam, there they are for a day. Yep. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, that's essentially what he did and what he's been doing the past two years around that September 15th to September 18th time frame. So it's just funny how every year it's just like clockwork to these deer and how they're on such a tight schedule. It's almost kind of funny. But no, we had a good good weekend then with uh, Mr. Lee, Leanne Abraham. And uh, we, we got after a few good deer. You know, we didn't see his big old buck. Um, that deer, unfortunately, like you guys heard, got hit. Um, but hopefully in Lacey, we get back after him. He's a slob, and uh, I know Lee's eager to get back to the farm. But uh, we did hang a new stand today for a southwest man. It's been something I've been wanting to do for that hog junior buck. And it's I've just started hunting this property, you know, this year, and I'm just starting to figure everything out. And Gosh, doing hanging hunts has been so enjoyable to hunt this farm. And, And we lost him. 
He left us hanging. Caleb. Cliffhanger. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> while while he's trying to reconnect, Gavin, it sounds like you've uh, you've gotten out a little bit on uh, on public and some private. That- yeah, yeah. I don't. I can't remember when the last time I was on here was. I want to say it was like early November, earlier in November. But um, basically through the early half of November, I've been mostly in the office. I've gotten out a little bit, um, but mostly just doing work um, on the computer. And then we've been largely just hunting here close to the house, between behind my house, just in the backyard up the hill, and then also I have a permission farm five minutes down the road. Um, we've been mostly just hunting there just cause it's easier. We can get out, do a quick sit until eight, nine o'clock and then come back and work all day. So, um, but that, that permission farm that I got, um, there's a really, really nice, uh, eight point He's tall time. I'd say he's like 150 inch, just real framey, pretty eight point. And since the rut kicked off, he's been super active. I've gotten a few daylight pictures of him now, just running the main draw that goes through there and just pushing does around, pushing other bucks around Just he's the man of the woods in there. So uh, we were hunting him all of last week. We had some of that snow and some of that colder weather and he was daylight a couple times last week, just never the time when, when we were out there. So, Um, and then uh, I wanted, I, I think it was Friday night. In the middle of the night, I woke up for whatever reason and had some pictures from my uh, tracks cameras. And uh, lo and behold, there's the big deer on public at 10 o'clock in the in the morning, just broad daylight staring right at the camera, just looking big as can be. He's he's definitely worn down, you know, run down from the rut and everything, but no tines broken off. I mean, he's still just the same old pig. So he. Uh, he was working into a doe bedding area, like I said, around 10 o'clock, right on the nose at 10. And then, so that was Friday morning that I got those pictures. And then Saturday night at 5.30, um, I got him going back into that um, doe bedding area as well. He was actually following a group of does just a few minutes behind him or whatever. Um, But I mean, he was right in there. I haven't gotten anything of him since. It's Tuesday now, so it's few days behind between doing the show and doing some other work just couldn't get out there right on him so but that's that's just what I needed we were I said on the last vlog we were pretty much committing to the hay farm just because like I said it's easy to do with with work and everything it's easier to just bounce over there and then bounce back here and of course he just had to go and show back up and just drag me through the mud some more so we're gonna I got another camera out today. We went and hunted him this afternoon. Had a decent little hunt. Uh, just saw does and dinks, um, but it was still a good, good sit. And I got another camera out. So hopefully we can just keep pinpointing him some more if he's still running around in there. I think that's for sure his core area. I mean, if I had to guess, he just moved off during the rut. He was just out chasing does all, all along that river bottom. I mean, it's, there's so much ground he could, he could be in that's and everything holds deer i mean all of its bedding between the river bo- the thick river bottom stuff there's crp there's wetland stuff i mean there's everything for for deer to live in so he's got more than plenty of does out there i think he was just mia for a while and now he's back so we'll see i mean we only got caleb ones of the shotgun season open december 5th or something december 3rd it's, it seems like it's a, a little earlier this year for some reason So we only got a little bit of time left, but I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully we can, if the big eight on the hay farm is going to be active some more, I'll go hunt him. If the big deer is back, I'll go hunt him. I'm just going to kind of just play it off, play it by ear. So we will see, but it's like I said, it's giving me the runaround. It's it's making my head spin a little bit because he's just so (laughs) <laughs> or if you hear Caleb and I's pattern, if you don't get any pictures of them, then maybe that's when you that's when you show up. Yeah, yeah, you never know. So I don't know. Pitch, pitch a tent out there, Gavin. Throw some cliff bars in there. Make your little fire and just start camping out there for him, buddy. That would make for a sweet show. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right, a little camp, camping hunt. 
as thick as it is, as thick it is as it is back in there, are you just going to hunt bedding, or are you going to try and find a, another pinch that you've already hunted? Have you found a spot that you like more than anything else for them? Yeah, the spot where we encountered them at is money. I mean, I still have a camera up there that's been pretty active. Um, I haven't seen him, or really any in the past few days, haven't seen any good bucks on there, but there's every morning around usually around like eight thirty nine 9 o'clock so a little bit later into the morning there's just a pile of deer that filter into the river bottom uh right through that spot and uh that seems like it's still a really hot spot they just like using that area but there's a couple there's one good pinch that we haven't had any crazy encounters out of but it's a decent spot there's some decent movement that goes through there but then yeah i mean like i said the rest of literally the entire, the entire property is bedding. Like there's, that's the problem with these river bottoms is it's so hard unless, unless you have a bunch of cameras with a bunch of pictures that you're kind of triangulating them. Or if, if you encounter them a bunch of times and you kind of know what he's doing, I mean, it's anybody's guess what mm -hmm. the, what down there. I mean, they could literally be going anywhere. So that's, what's tricky about it is it's just so hard to, so hard to hunt. So I think we're just going to kind of play it by ear. Like I said, I'm not going to put as much as I want to just go all in. It's November 22nd and I'm, I still have a tag to fill. So I just need to get that done <laughs> and off my plate. Getting to that time. If it's mature, it's looking pretty good at this point, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not that picky, you know that. So anyway, Caleb, uh, you, you had, uh, you left us abruptly there um what sorry what, about that my wi-fi is not as good as owens i guess yeah <laughs> right i'm not really sure where i left off but long story <laughs> short we got a new stand in there for him and i'm looking pretty forward to sitting in it tomorrow we got to do a hanging hunt get a couple muddies up in that tree and um jake and and i are feeling pretty confident gosh we did i guess i failed to mention we got out midday because i just didn't have much confidence he was going to be coming through because he was there yesterday daylight in front of that stand of course every time i am not hunting there legitimately every time i'm not hunting there this deer is daylight under my stand it's almost comical but we um chose not to hunt the rest of the evening go check a few cameras on a couple farms that haven't been working and you know this one farm we've been getting a couple really good bucks on camera midday and jacob uh the intern he's got a tag uh, so I had him, uh, pra been practicing with my bow and he's been on with it really good out to 40 yards. So we took the horns in there and, uh, grunt tube and, um, we tried a couple sets of just rattling and uh, a few calling sequences and ended up sitting the rest of the evening Well, we had probably three, um, young bucks, two and a half, maybe a three-year-old, um, come into about five, six yards. And it was a blast. I mean, we had the old war paint on. We put some mud on her face, kind of. Oh, <laughs> we felt we kind of felt like dinglings out there. I'm not gonna lie, but it's my first time ever kind of hunting from the ground, doing that rattling. And uh, gosh, we had a decoy; it would have been even better. But man, that's that's pretty intense. Uh, that ground hunting. I think we're uh, we're gonna have to try that one again. That's a lot of fun, ain't it, Caleb? It is, boy. There's. We both were saying, man, this, it's cool to see those young bucks, but gosh, you get a mature buck, especially this time of year. I mean, within even 20 yards, that's pretty, uh, that'll make your hair stand up a little bit. Yeah, you know, everybody sees the way we hunt on camera, you know, and people don't know the way you hunted when you were young, like in my case, you know, I got hunted like that for years. I've killed a lot of, a lot of deer that way. It, it's just a fun way to hunt, and it's effective, too. <laughs> exactly. That's what we learned that this evening it was very effective yeah Caleb have you noticed a difference in response from rattling on the ground uh you know what we I was doing somersaults and raking leaves and you know <laughs> what I, I could tell you this much it sounds a lot more like a buck fight um, on the ground but uh I do think especially today you know we we saw a good buck this morning we couldn't really tell who it was but um, you know, I started off with a couple of doe bleats, um, just to see what his interest was, uh, cause it looked like he was kind of cruising and he, uh, wagged his tail at us, acknowledged us, but kept working a scrape. So I tried snort wheezing, wheezing at him, see if he had any aggression. He stood, 
stood there, stared at us for a good two minutes, didn't see anything, didn't hear any crunching, you know, it's still as all can be. And I assumed with how still it was, he wouldn't commit. Who knows? Maybe he would, but he ended up working off. But I think that today, if I would have been hunting on the ground, I think that deer probably would have came in because uh, we could have maybe crunched the leaves a little bit. And gosh, mm -hmm. it makes me really kind of think about those uh, rattling horns on the rope that you just kind of let hit the ground. And um, but yeah. now, I forget who started that, but it makes me really want to try that out. Um, yeah, we. We first noticed that our first all day sit of the year, it was early November. Josh had to get down to, to go pee, you know, during the hunt. And he's like, well, I'm just going to take the, hor the horns down there. And he ran around and did it. And before he could even get back up, you know, there's a buck sitting there staring at us. So <laughs> we, we kind of, you know, caught on to something there. So whenever, you know, we have a chance or we know we can get up and down pretty quick, we've started to do that. And, and the other night, whenever Josh killed, you know, between the morning and the evening hunts, we rattled four times and, and bucks came in all four times. It was, wow. uh, I don't know if it was a coincidence, you know, if timing was right, but we, we've just been making ruckus getting on the ground to rattle. Yeah, I was going to go full redneck style and uh, on my muddy rope that my lineman's rope or whatever it's called, I He's gonna tie an extra one to the bottom and tie a log to it and just start shaking yeah. it <laughs> as as I'm calling at the same time. But yeah. yeah, no, it's uh pretty intense. But Jason is, is Jason still around? Yeah. I I heard so what happened uh these past few few uh days with you bow hunting during rifle season? I want kind of hear about that. You know, the first uh first two days I I was just directing traffic, really getting people to where they needed to go and, and, uh, had some young folks with me that, uh, hadn't, um, haunted this property before. So got them in the stands and, uh, I didn't do anything productive. Let's put it that way. But, uh, tonight I got out, um, with, uh, with the archery tackle and, uh, I hunted green and I don't know if that was a mistake or not. Um, you know, going from the, the southwest part of the state where it's really hill country, Caleb, you were down there earlier this year, right? Okay. Um, to, I think Owen talked about it a little earlier, that smaller woodlot um, in central Wisconsin. Um, I just I just figured tonight that uh, they would be on, on a feed pattern. Um, I may have miscalculated that because there were some deer that came out to, I've got probably an acre and a half food plot that just gets pummeled. Um, I've never had to, never had to mow it. And it looks like a, looks like a fairway most of the time, but it's a nice, it's a nice food plot that the deer use often. I've had some really good hunts in there earlier this year. Matter of fact, had I not been chasing Gumby, um, somewhere on the 20th of October, I would have shot, uh, one of the bucks that, um, I think one of seven bucks that I had come in that night. Um, but went back there and just saw a limited amount of deer um you know you can tell it's gun season um i just uh I, I gotta be honest i don't have a good gauge for what um uh, the deer are doing other than trying not to get shot uh you know both of the areas that i hunt in are relatively low pressure and relatively large you know pieces of property i think the one um piece that uh, we have is I don't know, there's probably 700 acres there and the other piece is close to 600 um, with a, you know, a limited amount of hunters. So I don't, I don't think that they're overly pressured, but uh, I think to think that they're not um, under some pressure would be, you know, kidding yourself. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Um, you guys hunt some pretty big tracks too that don't probably get touched a lot during shotgun. I'd be interested to hear what, uh, what your take on that is. I have a track that gets ran through, like all my stuff gets uh, ran through like crazy that I have permission on in shotgun season. But um, I, did you say, Jason, that you, yours doesn't get touched where you're hunting in shotgun? No. I mean, if, if it were me, I'd probably be in your same boat, probably just hunting a green food plot with how sunny it's been. I don't know if that's what the weather's been, but gosh, you know, it seems like you just hunt whatever you have for good access. That way you're not kicking them off the farm or anything like that. 
Well, you know, that's the tough part about going into, I've got a, a 10 acre cornfield um, that, uh, that produces, you know, it'll produce 50 deer a night, but the problem is getting out of there um, clean. You know, I made a, I made a nice trail into the, into the, uh, into the blind that's kind of in the middle of the cornfield. Um, and then there's cut corn out in front of it, but uh, getting out of there without blowing the whole place up, like setting off a bomb, you know, when 50 deer, 30 deer take off running, that's, um, well, the, I, I, I assume that everything else knows what's going on by the time that's over with. So, uh, Have you ever tried act, coyote calling to get that, yes. that field clear? Yeah. Yep. That's been, that, that, over the last few years, that's been working for me like a charm. Yeah, it, it it works pretty well. Um, I just I, I just felt like it wasn't worth the the risk wasn't worth the reward with the way the weather was, and I really felt like it was going to be warm enough to uh, to get them on green, and it just didn't turn out that way. Um, I suspect, you know, as we get a little bit warmer here every day, I don't know how warm it was down there, but it was forty six here today supposed to be a little warmer tomorrow i i thought that that would have put them on green but like i said it didn't yep i saw the same thing they were on beans pretty hard today yeah so tomorrow guys, tomorrow that may change you guys see uh you know i i've noticed you know on when it's colder mornings or colder mid till midday and it, that sun pokes out maybe they get on green pretty good even with their with snow on the ground but do you guys really see much for trying to pattern when deer are going to hit beans harder than maybe corn and the november time frame or maybe even in late season it's just didn't know if anyone ever found some kind of trend um where deer maybe pick one grain source over another it's always corn Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> they I mean, were gosh I, I bring that up because man i saw probably 50 deer tonight on beans and there's big old fresh cut cornfield right across the road, and I would have thought they'd been over there. But Is there a lot of corn in the cut corn. I mean, depends on whose combine went through it. You know, sometimes <laughs> there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, I've planted corn and soybeans side by side so many times. You know, thinking that same thing that you're thinking, and almost every time corn would win out all times of the year. But now, if all you had was beans. I mean, they'd flock to it just the same like corn wasn't there, you know. They, they just wouldn't go out of their way to go away from beans. But if they had the option, they almost always went to corn. Or maybe they would feed them both and start out in corn and then move over into the beans, you know. But that's been what I've seen. Is there much winter wheat up there? Uh, Not yes, yeah. we, we plant it. I mean, I don't know what you see there, Caleb, but if we plant it for a food plot, other than that, there's not. Yeah, agreed. There's, I guess there's some cover crop and um, that winter rye, they hit that pretty good in the, in the cover crop fields. But honestly, they hit that probably more so the first couple of weeks in November and then it's hard really seeing them on that anymore. So what's the, what's the strategy for the next 10, 12 days? Obviously, there's going to be some sort of, sort of shift. It sounds like the deer that uh, that you guys are hunting probably are winding down the rut, still looking for that last doe. Um, was that accurate? Yeah, yeah going with the cameras. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're seeing them, you know, ramp back up. We're seeing them behind does, and like I said, these last few days, I think they're gonna do what they're gonna do and get back to food here, you know, pretty quick. What do you see them? Yeah. Uh, honestly, my strategy right now just. Those bucks should still be cruising at least till probably two, two, three o'clock in the afternoon, I would think. But we, we're, we're, we're still seeing that right now. But I think uh, instead of staying on a pinch point or a funnel here till all day, I think I'm probably going to elect to try and move stands off a creek bed to another stand that's sitting over some grain and uh, probably just hunt the grain in the evenings. It seems like these deer have kind of gravitated started to make that november switch where they're starting to focus more in on uh, agriculture in the evening hours and um it's not taking them as long to get out in the fields and that's even tonight i saw quite a few bucks on grain but um that's probably my plan i want to hear what gavin's plan is though to kill this <laughs> giant public deer i'm all stoked about it i couldn't tell you my plan dude i just i don't even know what to do with that deer anymore he uh i think we're gonna 
hunt some just some bedding areas just kind of bounce around until we get a better bead on them maybe i'll try to get some more cameras um or move some around or something you know make some adjustments but um i'm probably gonna hunt the hay farm some depending on just depending on the cameras as well just to kind of base it off of that there's alfalfa out there which i'm curious to see how they how they do with that um late season it's a there's plenty of it i mean in the and it's pretty soft it's still pretty green out there and everything and i haven't seen them hitting it that hard um with it getting colder i've seen them more on the corn there's a cut cornfield just on the neighbors just across the property line um and and, and it's in between some two bedding areas so i mean it's it's a solid little spot um but I'm curious to see if they touch that alfalfa or not, Caleb. I know you said you've seen them hit alfalfa hard late season, but I'm just curious to see how that goes. So, but as far as the big deer, I couldn't tell you my plan. I have no idea what to do with that thing. So, dude, have you, have you thought about maybe getting in there on the ground and just? I know, isn't is? I think it's a decent chunk. But have you thought about maybe taking a decoy in there and just still hunting your way through there to cover more ground? Man, you know I've a decoy would be awesome. Cause I, I do think that that deer is callable. Um, I think he's an aggressive deer and he was, I mean, we called at him and he was coming towards us. He was just downwind and it was a bad decision to call at him downwind. I, I learned that one the hard way. <laughs> um, but, uh, I think, I think you could use a decoy. The problem is, is everywhere is so thick. There's not an open area on that entire piece. I mean, CRP, like I said, um, that's is head high. I mean, I'm not kidding you like grass that's head high, uh, on me and I'm six, six foot. So, um, and then just thick river bottom everywhere else. It's, it's just, it would be tough to, to, you know, try to call it a deer and hopefully he gets a visual on you and comes in. I mean, there's just not, unless he's within 50. I mean, I just don't see that happening, but yeah, it's kind of a tough play for sure. Do you know where he's feeding, Gavin? Is there a bead on any corn or soybeans in the area? There is. So we actually did see, I hadn't been down there. Today was my first time being down there since um, November 8th, I think it was. We, so we hadn't been down in a while. But there is still some standing corn. So there's there's um, there's um, just a bunch of ag just to the north of this property. And it just goes on and on and on. There's plenty of plenty of ag fields that butt right up against the, the cover where they're where they're at. So it's pretty obvious that they're probably just going out there at night, just waiting till dark and then going out there. But um, there is some standing corn still. They haven't combined yet. So I'm assuming that that's going to be their number one spot for now until they do finish cutting it. Um, but yeah, it's like I said, I'm assuming that that's all till after dark. They got to cross some roads and stuff. So can you get around on that side where you can get between the thick cover and that food or? Just and that, that's exactly where we were at tonight and we saw we actually didn't see a single deer going towards the ag fields they were all going the opposite way which was just beyond me so yeah you wouldn't think here before long they're going to start going back to food so right just a matter yeah, of I'm days. Hoping that the shotgun pressure doesn't just blow blow the whole world up in there um i'm sure that it's going to get run through multiple times come come uh early december so we'll see i think if if he if he survives after that i think that there's a good chance because like i said i think almost it's it's almost certain that he lives right in there on that piece so that river bottom timber i've hunted a, a quite a few i mean that spot that you and i went up and put those cutty bags at river bottom public gets just loaded with deer uh, it seems and um in late season so you might have a better shot than not as long as he doesn't get shot during shotgun to get back after right. him. but i got more yeah. confidence in you that you're going to get it done sooner and later yeah i need to uh i need to get some advice from some of you guys show you some show it to you on the map and see what you guys think and i don't know just need to need to get something going he's giving me the run can, around like i said i can Making help the old four preference points uh for next year so <laughs> oh, i don't need any of that <laughs> <laughs> no come on down man show you a good time oh. i'll be somewhere down there 
I'm yeah. not sure where yet, but um, yeah. Um, anybody got anything else? Otherwise, we'll close her out for the night and uh, let everybody have uh, one more day before Thanksgiving, and then we'll probably get together again close to the weekend or on the weekend or um, somewhere right in there. Don't don't all talk at once. <laughs> Right. Adam, congrats on that deer again, man. That's that's a that's a stud. No one get get to feeling better, Gavin. Go Thanks, kill that deer, man. man. We'll, talk, we'll talk soon, Jason. All right, guys. Have a good rest of your night. All right. Thanks. thanks guys. You bet. Take care, guys. Bye.